Hello guys, before you start, please make sure that your paper is not too wet. It shouldn't be shiny on the surface when you start. You're going to be starting with the two yellows and you're going to be blending them into a nice full moon. And then you're going to make a ring of yellow around that moon, leaving a white ring in between. And because the paper is wet, the yellow is going to seep into that space a little bit later on, but that's part of the effect, so that's okay. So you let the rays disperse on the sides, and you let the circle inside stay uh, intact. So you push the glow around a bit, leaving some white around the moon, and then you're going to be using the yellows once again to make a path on the ground here. The path is going to go diagonally towards the lower right of your page. And you're going to blend both yellows but make sure to clean your brush whenever you switch a color. Find the yellow that you like. So the glow of the moon is reflecting here on the ground. And then we're going to be using red to transition that yellow into the blue that will be on the outsides because this painting will be in the dark of the night so just blend the red on the sides of the path like this and you, you can use water to uh, let the paint be easier to push around and you're going to be doing the same with the sky you're going to be making a uh, red the transition color between the yellow of the moon and the blue of the sky so spread the red around here in the sky so that we can have sor sort of a purplish blue sky in the end it's going to be blue with a tinge of red so blend your edges remember you can use water to blend the edges if there are harsh streaks and just spread it around very lightly so red is very light here it's not dark red for the sky we're going to be using the ultramarine blue that's a lighter blue because it goes better with purple to make purple and you're going to be blending that with the red here but you are trying to leave the yellow of the moon um, sort of pure you're going to be approaching it but not blending into it too much then you're going to be doing it on both sides, making sure to leave a space here on the left side of the paper because later on we will be painting the hall here. Here up the hall where Grendel visits and, you know, murders the people in there basically. Now we are going to be using Prussian blue for the ground, not ultramarine. So Prussian blue is the darker one and it goes on the ground because this is uh, some grass and some cheese here on the ground. So do that on the right side first. And then you're going to be using the water to pull in some of the color, the Prussian blue, onto the glow of the moon that's reflecting on the ground. Because we don't want this to be too pure. We want the moon to be the shiniest. Now we are going to make a hall here. And it's just really a simple house-like shape. Around this time, uh, my phone stopped recording the video for some reason. It uh, looked like it recorded, but it didn't save. So I'm going to be explaining some of the steps here between. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you a picture of what you will add. You will be adding a doorway, some windows, and then you're going to make a mountain in the background here where the sky meets the ground. And then just a lot of trees while the paper is still wet. And I'm going to show, be showing you here. Um, at this point, the paper was already dry. So you need to actually, after painting some trees, dry the paper. Once the paper is dry, it's going to be easier to add more trees that will be less dispersed. So you can see that the trees here in the background look a little whispery, right? <laughs> they look like they already spread around. But these new trees that I'm painting down now that the paper is dry are um, stronger in color. They lighten less. So 
you have basically two layers of cheese one layer while the paper is wet and then this layer when the paper is already sort of dry now if you want to add more shadows when the paper is already dry this is a technique that you can do only wet the part where you want to add more color so here i want to put some shadow with the ultramarine blue because i thought the hall was too bright it's night time so it should be a bit darker so as you can see here i put a barrier of water and then i added the blue and the paint that already dried did not move too much when i did this all right now we're going to be adding grendel himself we're going to be starting with his chest and this is moving on real time now i'm not speeding it up so you can really see the chest is very broad and then it narrows down to the hips and then we are making two legs so one leg first here and then his face is going to be uh, very strange you're not trying to paint a human being here uh, this creature has a large chest and a relatively small head and I'm using the brush in sort of a dabbing motion so you can see that the edges are sort of frayed like he, he is covered with some sort of hair or fur all around his body so I'm adding here the back leg and also the other arm that's on uh, that's farther from us and I'm adding more uh, fur on his back so that he really looks not very human-like anymore. Alright, so he's crouching here. He's not upright like humans are. And now I am adding just more shadows by putting water first again. And then adding the Prussian blue. And I'm trying to put the shadows from on the other side of the moon. Okay, and now here I'm adding shadows on the ground for the mountain because it's too bright here. The moon should be the shiniest part of your painting again. Now, by this point, you can just look around in your painting and see what you can add or enhance. For me, I wanted to put a lot more trees because this is a very dark place. The path is clear, but it's in the forest. So I'm adding a lot of trees in the darkness over here. And also on the other side of the path here. Still the same shape. Still the same type of trees. So all of the trees will be sort of the same shape. That is our painting for today.